In this tutorial we're going to have a look at some of the main features you'll come across when using a compressor. A compressor is kind of like an automatic volume control. It works by reducing the amplitude of a signal that goes above a certain level or threshold and we set that level by using the threshold control here. So for example if we turn that down to say minus 20 dB then anything that goes above minus 20 dB will be reduced in volume and how much it's reduced in volume is set by the ratio control here. So to give an example, a setting of 2 here is a ratio of 2 to 1, which means that for every 2 dB that goes above this threshold here, only 1 dB will make it to the output. And this graph down at the bottom indicates visually what's going on. The output is represented vertically, and the input is represented horizontally. So you can see the threshold represented here at minus 20 dB and as soon as that's hit then this angle indicates how much the level's being changed. So as we've got a ratio of 2 to 1 then for every 2 dB above minus 20 1 dB is sent to the output so that basically means the dynamic range is halved. So as the only part of the signal that is changing is whatever is above that threshold then the dynamic range we're referring to is between the threshold and the 0 dB point so minus 20 and half of that is 10, so that's why we can see here the output is now at minus 10. So to look at an example, let's take these two vocal clips. The first one's quite low in volume, and the second one's quite a bit higher. Now I might set the threshold just a little bit lower, set it to minus 30, just for this example, to make sure that we're catching it all. And let's just play it through once, without the compressor, to hear the difference. So keep an eye on this output meter here. Sun is gonna shine. So you can see there's quite a big difference between those two vocals. This first one sits down here quite low, and then when the second one comes in, Sun is gonna shine. it's all the way up here. So when we turn on the compressor, you can see it hasn't made a great deal of difference to the lower one because it's not really edging above that threshold much anyway. But on the second one, it brings it down by quite a lot and reduces the difference between the two quite significantly. So we've reduced the level of this one here, but we haven't changed this one much at all because a lot of it sits below that threshold there. So we might want to increase the overall volume by turning this makeup gain knob up a bit. And so you'll see what we're actually doing there is we're increasing the volume of everything here below this threshold and everything above the threshold is still being increased just by not as much because it's also being squashed. So let's just try listening to it again. And this time I'll set the ratio a bit higher so that it's being squashed even more. So you can see that's brought it down even more so we can afford to turn that makeup gain knob up even more. So just by changing the threshold ratio and makeup gain knobs, we've managed to even out the levels of those vocals by quite a lot. So the next most important controls on a compressor are the attack, release, and in some cases hold, although not all compressors have this. These controls determine how quickly the compressor starts or stops working after the threshold's been crossed in either direction. So the attack decides how quickly the compressor starts working after the signal goes above the threshold. So it's measured in milliseconds and a short setting or a low value means that pretty much as soon as the threshold's crossed it'll start working. While a higher value will mean there'll be a slight delay before it starts working. Which means the natural attack of the sound will be allowed through. So to have a look at an example we're going to use a snare drum because that's a good example of attack. So I'll pull the threshold down a fair bit just to give it quite an extreme sound so we can really hear it. Now if I pull the attack down, you can hear the compression starts pretty much straight away. We're compressing the snare's attack as well. And that does a pretty good job of controlling the levels. It's bringing the level down quite a lot. But that also has the effect of removing a lot of the punch from the snare drum because the attack is where it gets a lot of that from. So you can hear as we've brought the attack up, the compression isn't starting as quickly and it's allowing a lot of the snare's natural attack through. But that also means the levels are a bit harder to control. So you might want a bit of a compromise somewhere in between 
that still allows some of the snare's natural attack through, but also catches some of those peaks because the attack is where you'll get a lot of those peaks from. And the release is more or less the opposite. It's basically how quickly the compressor stops working after the signal goes below the threshold. So it's how quickly it returns to normal. So the release can have quite a dramatic effect on the sound as well. A fast release setting means the compressor stops working really quickly so it goes back to the natural sound. But if you turn it up the other way, you'll notice it compresses for longer so it keeps the level down and sounding much more compressed. And the hold control holds the compressor for the amount of time you specify before passing it on to the release stage. So it just keeps the compressor going regardless of whether the signals cross the threshold or not. And you can see this meter indicating what it's doing. So it's possible to have a reasonably long hold and a very short release and create that kind of reverb pre-delay effect. So the hold is holding the compressor on, then passes it on to the release stage which lets go of it really quickly. So these timing settings such as attack, release and hold play a big part in how natural it sounds. Just like with the snare, a lot of sounds get a lot of their natural sound from their attack. So to squash it by compression can sometimes make things sound unnatural. And the ear is actually less sensitive to shorter attack type sounds and more comfortable listening to longer constant sounds. But there's a couple of different main ways that you might use compression. Firstly, you might use it just to even out levels, in which case you might want it to sound more natural and transparent so that the compression isn't obvious. And if that's the case, then you might want to go for longer attack and release times. But if you're wanting to use compression as more of an effect to really influence the sound and change it creatively, then some of these shorter times might be suitable. We're going to have a bit more of a look at this in context throughout this chapter.